I think it's a night that you and I always knew was coming because we've read that law and we know how simple it is and how it, it had to be enforced. Uh, can you tell us in the meeting today, were there any Republican votes in favor of releasing the Trump tax returns? No, unfortunately, there were not, Lawrence. Uh, as you know, before the lawsuit was ever filed on Valentine's Day back in 2017, I made the first motion to release these tax returns that was blocked by Republicans for two years, and they're still covering up for Donald Trump. It was a professional meeting, but they're the same arguments that they've been making all along that I think have no merit. All we know now is that Donald Trump is a guy with big credits, big deductions, big losses, but seldom a big tax bill. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, what we are going to see when we're able to take a look at the details of these tax returns? Well, as you pointed out, you won't see as much as you would with a normal auditing process because the success of our uh, investigation and the work that Chairman Neal did is that we now know the Trump IRS failed to hold him accountable. Uh, and so there are no working papers here. There was a, it was a narrow inquiry where uh, the Ways and Means staff and the Joint Tax Committee staff were unable to talk with anyone at the IRS. What we do have, and you're very familiar with the Joint Tax Committee, they've identified about 10 areas that need to be further explored that should have been explored in an audit. But uh, the Trump IRS didn't have much interest in audits uh, and didn't act until Chairman Neal's letter went out. Uh, to clarify for the audience, there's a, a separate group of tax professionals in the Congress called the Joint Committee on Taxation. Uh, they serve mostly as technical experts to the Senate Finance Committee, the Tax Writing Committee in the Senate, the House Ways and Means Committee, the Tax Writing Committee in the House. Uh, and the, the Joint Tax Committee staff, we at the Senate Finance Committee staff, always regarded as uh, the, the kind of higher level of the game, uh, e even wiser and capable of more expertise looking at these things than normal committee staff are. And the committee staff are the best that there is. There's just a, an even higher level than that. Uh, what, what have you found in the Joint uh, Tax Committee's specific analysis of these tax returns? Well, they've uh, had to do an analysis in a very short period of time, basically since Thanksgiving. Uh, and they uh, identified a, about 10 areas that need further exploration. Overall, unlike most taxpayers who would go in in an audit, there's no substantiation here for much of anything. The IRS said they'd accept uh, essentially Trump's word or that of his uh, uh, accounting firm. Uh, and I, I found most troubling the fact that uh, in 20, 2015, he still was uh, relying on a, a tax loss carry forward of about $105, $107 million. Uh, that, along with other deductions and credits that he claimed, meant that in a number of years he paid nothing in taxes. And as you know, one year, $750. Uh, there is less information about foreign entanglements here because this was a narrow inquiry and of the some 500 Trump tax entities, uh, the committee only got information about eight of them. It was limited to six years, even though this issue of a huge loss carryover was from an earlier year that was not investigated. So I think we know that uh, a lot about Trump and about uh, the operations of the IRS and its failings, but there's still more that uh, ought to be learned about this. And I hope that the Senate will continue uh, the work that we've done since Republicans have made it clear not only do they want to keep uh, a cover-up of Trump's tax returns, but they want to ensure that nothing on this issue happens beginning January 3rd.